All the earth is filled with His glory. Lord Most High, there's no other God like You. Yes, there's no other King like You. You heal all diseases. Savior of all sin. Lord Most High. There's no other God like you, yeah. There's no other King like you. You heal all diseases. Savior of all sin. You're the Lord most high. You're the Lord most high. So we breathe you in.
the earth is filled with his glory. All the earth is filled with his glory. those broadcasts man it was so much revelation there i hope you watch the replay and stuff like that and let it replay in your soul let it replay in your soul because see um see god doesn't god is not that's not his job for you to get his word in your soul that's not his job all he all he does is just sow the word to you you get it inside of your soul and you let it live inside of your soul. But that's your job. Meditation is your job. God get the seed to you, but then you meditate on it. The word of God. And the more, the more that you meditate on the word, the more the power that's in the word start moving. We can't get this... Um, you, you can never get this out of your sight, how the Bible said that he casted out devils with a word. So he used the word to cast them out. 
That's how powerful the word is. So when you are letting that word get inside of you, you're casting out devils out of your soul. Now, when, when we deal with the devils in your soul, I'm talking about stuff in the future. Sometimes you're not going to be having a mental struggle right now. There are going to be times where you're going to be at an all-time high. Satan going to be on a vacation. You're going to be good. But that meditation, you got to stack up on it and be strong in it every time, every moment of your life. And saints, let me just say this to you. A lot of times, uh, spiritually, you're going to feel like you're strong and your soul is at 30%. You're going to feel like you're powerful and your soul is at 50%. You're not at 100%. But your soul feels like that. I mean, your spirit, your spirit, you feel like you, you, and your spirit is at 70%. I mean, y'all know that your phone still work real good when it's at 70 and 60, but that's not the highest. Remember, um, King Jesus gave um, some levels. He said the 30, the 60, and the 100 fold. And that's Mark chapter four. The 30, the 60, maybe I'm not supposed to wear these glasses tonight. Excuse me, I got long eyelashes. My daughter be doing the same thing. <laughs> my my daughter Zendaya Glory Home. She got long eyelashes, so she always up there talks. My eyes says Zendaya, what's wrong? I already know what it is because of long eyelash. Some of you ladies up here be pinned on them extra long eyelashes. I don't know how you do it, baby. I don't know why you're doing it. Why you doing it, baby? Pin on them long eyelashes. You think you're all cute? Then the eyelash. Once that eyelash get lazy, it start falling down. It start looking like you got a caterpillar on your eyes. <laughs> you you put, the, put the eyelash down and look like there's a, there's a caterpillar on the windowsill. Let's go right here. Look at Ephesians chapter. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter two, verse uh, 21. It says, in, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Or let's go to Ephesians 2.20. It says that the church, the house of God is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. What is basically saying that God uses the apostle, the prophet as a foundation so that the church idea can go forth so that people can move in power. So that's, that's my assignment to you. I'm, I'm giving you power to trample over the serpent, the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. Now, look what it says right here in verse 22. In whom ye also are being built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Are you seeing this? It's saying that the Lord, he's building you so that you can be the proper habitation that he's looking for. That means 24-7, he can feel at home. How many of y'all understand this, right? That a lot of times uh, when we deal with uh, the, 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 um, the atmosphere that you carry, do you know that there's some people that God feel more at home with them than others? Because imagine if somebody is like willing and they're open to the father doing whatever he want and somebody has like certain standards, you know, I'm not going to do this. You know, I, no, nah, I'm not. It, that person, they, they, they are blocking off the building process for God to fill at home with them. So saints, there were some people in, in that camp, the children of Israel that looked at Goliath, they was afraid of him. They didn't want to go forth. And even though the spirit was moving them to go forth, they was like, no, nah, no. Nah. But David said, no, I will go forth. Whatever you want me to do, I'm ready. I'm not scared enough. And he's the one that's carrying the law of favor. That willingness took him over. So now he's ready to go all the way in. And that's what um, the, his kingship was inside of that quality. 
Now, when we deal with kingship, let's go to Revelation chapter one, verse five and six, right? Revelation one, five and six says that through his blood, he has saved us, he redeemed us, and he has made us kings and priests. Now, I want you to see this. Remember what the Bible says that in Christ, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. In, in, in Christ, when you're in Christ, that gender stuff and that um, cultural stuff, it don't, it don't matter. You see what I'm saying? Because when you're in the spirit realm, you just Christ. He has taken you over. He's living inside of you and he's living out his life, his name, all of that stuff through you. So when you're moving with Christ, right? All that you have to do is keep yourself in that image of God. Now, the image of God transmits to you confidence, boldness, and consistency. If you take a note, write that down. The image of God transmits to you confidence, boldness, and consistency. The image of God, remember in Genesis chapter one, uh, the Lord said that let us make man in our image and likeness. That image of God, that's God transferring to you his qualities, the image. So when we deal with the image of God, we're dealing with the qualities of the Lord being imparted to you. So mentally, you're going to think in the same form of pictures that God is thinking. Now, think about this, right? Apostle Paul said, casting down vain imaginations. So if there's vain imaginations, there's divine imaginations. So why does Satan even send you imaginations? Because that's what God does. God speaks through imaginations. What, why do you think that the Bible talk about faith, hope, and love, right? Faith, hope, and love. And above all of that is love. But why do why you think the Bible talk about faith, hope, and love? Let's go ahead to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Look at that. It says there, there abided faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Why does God have faith, hope? So it show you that faith and hope have different functionalities. Faith, hope, and love all have different functionalities. But all of them work through pictures in the mind, imagination. Watch this here. Do you know the reason why you even saved today? It's because God had an imagination. You're not saved because of good works, good behavior. The father had an imagination. Your salvation is connected to God's imagination in eternity. So the only way that you get saved, the only way that you could even access salvation was because God was in imagination. Remember, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish. That's an imagination right there. God is dreaming. Oh, man, all creation will stop perishing. This is a dream. He's seeing this in his mind, but they shall have everlasting life. This is what he's dreaming about. So even your salvation is connected to imagination. So God used the grace of hope to save you. God had expectation. He was dreaming and that's how he quickened himself back into the inspiration to even talk to mankind. Remember, in Samuel's day, the word of the Lord was rare, right? That means that God was not inspired to talk to anybody. He was not inspired to have conversation. So the word of the Lord was rare. So when Samuel comes on the scene, now you see God talking a lot. He having conversations with Samuel. Remember Samuel already knew that Saul was going to come to him because God is talking to Samuel. But look what Samuel did. Samuel ministered to the Lord. And remember, Samuel was in a priest's house. If you remember in the Old Testament, the priests would collect the prayers and would collect the offerings of the people. 
and will go into the Holy of Holies and offer up that offering and say, Lord, and intercede for the people. Samuel was born up in a priest's house. So he was introduced to how to minister to the Lord. Remember, the priests will collect the offerings that show you that Samuel was raised up in, a, in, a, in an environment where he learned how to sow. Remember, after he ministers to the Lord, now God says, Samuel, Samuel, you see what he's doing? He's connecting with the father's soul, with his soul. He's doing something that the father loves. The father is pleased. Now the father wants to talk. Hey, listen, if you're a woman, you understand this. If you're a man, you understand this. You ever was angry so, so much that you didn't want to talk? You ever noticed that before? Um, when people get angry, they don't want to talk. When they feel bad, when they feel displeased. Um, if you take somebody somewhere and they don't want to be there, they, they get quiet. But see, the father was in a quiet stage because he was unhappy. Think about that. Now, during the time where the father wasn't happy, the serpent was rejoicing. Think about that. And before Samuel came on the scene, the serpent, the scorpion, and the powers of the enemy was triumphant. During the time where God was not talking before Samuel, the serpent was on its throne. The scorpion was reigning with its crown and the powers of the enemy was dominating the earth. Think about that. Think about that. Remember in the other broadcast, I read to you numbers. I was giving you those scriptures where God, he made them wander in the wilderness. During that time where God was angry, the serpent was happy. The scorpion was rejoicing and the powers of the enemy was reigning on the earth. Now, when Samuel came on the scene, now Samuel destroys that. Hereby, you have to understand a lot of times. No, not a lot of times. Let me clarify this. All the time. God puts you in a natural family where the serpent, the scorpion, and all the powers of the enemy has been rejoicing all the time, all the time, not some of the time, not half of the time, all the time. Um, remember they said about King Jesus, can anything good come out of Galilee or Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Remember that's, uh, John chapter one, verse 46. John chapter one, verse 46. Remember Nathaniel asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel, which was one of the disciples. He asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That show you that Nazareth was hood. Nazareth was a place of criminals. Nazareth was a place of fugitives. Now, if you remember Cain, who was of the wicked one, first John says that he was of the wicked one. I think that's first John chapter three, verse probably 12. First John chapter three, I believe it's first John chapter three. He was of the wicked one. His works was evil. Remember Cain, Cain was a murderer. Now I want you to think about this. King Jesus comes out of a place where murderers are, criminals are, and hatred dominates this race of people. Hatred rules this lineage. And so when Nathaniel hears Philip telling him about King Jesus, he said, well, can anything good come out? Now, watch this here. Look at his frame of words. Can anything good? Which means that Nazareth was known for evil. When you have a King Jesus destiny on your life as a woman, as a man, God makes sure that you come out of darkness. 
so so even when you learning how to be divine and holy and righteous and pure and wise, that's why you still got to break off all the things that are evil via the word, via faith. You got to do that because God on purpose, he plant your soul in a, in a lineage of people that are dominated by the serpent, the scorpion, and the powers of the enemy. And then sometimes we, we like to say, well, you know, I, you know, my people wasn't dominated by the serpent, the scorpion, and all the powers of the enemy. Were, were, were they rich? Were they financially rich? Oh, no. Okay. Did they own any houses, lands? Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Did they own any property, lands, cars, anything? Did they own anything? Okay. They own little son, son. All right. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Did you have to work nine to five to get, get some money? Did you have to go to school to get a job, get money? All, this? all right. 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 Uh, the, have you ever been in debt? Okay, you was in debt? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You, you, you ever prayed for God to give you a financial miracle? All right, 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 all right. See, nothing was transferred. See, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. See, that's the blessing. That's, but look what the Bible said. See, we call people good all the time, but the Bible said a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children, children. So what's opposite to a good man, an evil man? All right. So what you want to see is that when you came into this earth, the reason why you had to toil and you had to try to make your way out because you came out of a family that was underneath the powers of the enemy the serpent and the scorpion. So you can't follow the same pattern in which they followed. How are you going to give me advice and you ain't got no evidence? See, let, let, let me just tell you something about me, right? Um, there's nobody that ever met me that can say that I didn't treat them right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, not a woman, a man, a boy, a girl, a baby, it don't matter who it is, black, white, skinny, fat, it don't matter what it is. You know why? Okay. I want you to see this, right? There is a certain mindset that you take on when the serpent is crushed. Remember, the serpent's whole job was to create discord in the woman. The serpent's job was to create confusion, animosity, enmity, hatred, discord, and so that the woman would mistreat the presence of God. And then the man would take on that same attitude and mistreat the presence of God. Now, I'm going to say this to you. I want you to always remember this. Remember when God comes on the scene. Look how they mistreated God. Because God was asking Adam, where art thou? Now, think about this. If God has to ask you for your location. And he planted you in that garden. Think about this, that show you how Adam has lost respect as a man for his garden. Because remember, we don't see nowhere else in Genesis where God asks him where he is. That was the first time God is asking him, where art thou? But who imparted that to him? The serpent. So the serpent, uh, transmitted a mindset to Adam that made him disrespect God. <laughs> so, so a Adam, Adam was not like this. Adam was always in the proper place, always ready for father God, 
always ready for instructions, always ready for conversation, always ready for intimacy, always ready for friendship, always ready for worship, always ready for servanthood, always ready for honor, always ready for praise, always ready for thanksgiving, always ready for student uh, student operation. He was ready to learn. And now God cannot access him according to the spirit. Now God can access him. We know God can access anybody because even David said, if I make my bed in hell, the Lord will be there. God can access anybody. But when God said, where art thou? He's, he's, he's showing that I am spirit and you were spirit, but now you're flesh. We can't communicate. And I, where I am, you're not no longer there. I can't locate you in my same section. He moved. Now, saints, so when I deal with the serpent right now, this is a dominion teaching, right? The serpent's job is to impart something to you that's adversarial to God's system. My God, are you, are you seeing this? <laughs> The serpent's job is to give to you something that God never wanted you to possess. Sickness, lack, fear, insecurity, brokenness. When I say brokenness, I don't mean humility. I mean brokenness as in slavery. There's two different brokenness that the Bible describes. There's the brokenness that is without uh, um, uh, the brokenness for humility, where you get broken before God, meaning that you, you are in a posture of saying, Lord, repair me, make me whole, tell me what to do. But then there's a brokenness that comes from what we call um, slavery, meaning that you can't snap out of this pattern of wrong thinking and wrong decisions. My goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So the brokenness that God looks for in worship is that you know that only he can give you the instruction that can make you whole. But the brokenness that Satan gives, it is a slavery. It is to keep you in the, 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 the ignorance of faith the rejection of hope and the distraction from what God is saying. And Satan could do that in many ways. Many people are broken today because they get offended. The minute you get offended, you can't listen, you can't hear. Do you know that the righteousness of God, it shuts down in functionality? When you're not walking in love. Do you know the minute that you don't walk in love, none of God's functionality can work. Think about that. So when we dealing with uh, the, the righteousness of God, right? The righteousness of God, it is the way that God wanted your mind to function in 24 hours. Now, righteousness is a position that God gives to you without you doing nothing. It's paid for by the blood. But then righteousness has a fruit system to that. And you find that in the book of James. Huh? The peaceable fruit of righteousness. We find that in Hebrews 2. Right? When I say Hebrews 2, I don't mean Hebrews chapter 2. I mean Hebrews also. <laughs> Glory to God, right? Huh? I feel real good, man. I feel like I'm a teacher, man. I'm learning how to teach. That's what I'm learning. I'm learning how to teach. Yeah, I'm learning. Went to Africa. I went, went to Africa to receive some powers so I could... <sighs> glory to God. Glory to God. It's okay for you to laugh, man. It's okay for you to laugh. It's okay for you to laugh. Now that's Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. 
That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. It says that you are being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Are you seeing this? Now it's talking about being filled with the fruits of righteousness. So righteousness in the book of, I think, Romans, um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I think that's Ephesians 1, 17, the book of Romans. We all see the position of righteousness given via the blood. That's the position. But when we deal with um the position, now, after the position, we also deal with what we call the fruit. And listen, that's the performance. So there's a, there's a dimension of righteousness, which is position. The devil can't do nothing about that. You, that's given to you. Nothing that you did to buy that. But then we have what we call performance. Now watch this, people of God. I want you to see this. Philippians 1.11 talks about being filled with the fruits of righteousness. This means that you have learned the ways of God. Now, what are the ways of God? Let's go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Look at this here. What are the ways of God? Remember, destroying the power of the serpent, the scorpion, and all the powers of the enemy. What's Genesis chapter 8, verse 22? Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Look what it says here. Look what it says. It says, while the earth remaineth, there'll be seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, and it shall not ever cease. Hereby in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, we're seeing what God looks for while you're in the earth. While you're in the earth, God is looking for seed time, harvest. And then he gives you these confirmations of how sure the seed, the time, the harvest is, because then he talks about cold and heat, summer and winter. Are you catching this? If we look at our seasons right now, we just saw the coldness. Some of y'all still in coldness right now. Man, it was cold inside of Texas. It was getting on my nerves. When the snow came here, I got so angry, man. And something something happened to me, right? Because I was just flowing and flowing. And then there was an hour I had before I had got on the line. And the spirit had quickened me to talk to the storm. Before that, I wasn't doing it. Because I was chilling. I saw the cold, the the, the the air out, the, you know, it was snowing. And I, all of a sudden, I just had a hatred for snow. I just hated it. And, and the Spirit of God released a roar in me. And I felt faith rise up. So remember what I did? I had got on the line, right? I was on Facebook Live. I said that, I said, I'm going to speak to this storm and it's going to go. Because I... Also, God let me hear there was another like newscaster. He was saying, prepare for the next wave of the, the storm, the winter storm. I said, winter storm. And I got offended. Who told you, who told you there's about to be a winter storm? And because, you know, a prophet is a weatherman. I'm a weatherman myself. So, so he was talking about it would prepare for the next, the next uh, dump of the winter storm. I was like, what? So I started speaking to the storm. And saints, I said something to the snow. Some of y'all, you know, I called the snow a name and I said, don't come back here. 
right now in this season. Don't come back here no more. I spoke to the storm just like that. I spoke to the storm like I was speaking to someone. And when I saw snow, I said, snow, you got to get out of here. I don't want to see you in this season again. I spoke to the storm just like that. Saints, you, you saw me do it. And when I did it, remember, I, I did that for some of y'all that was in Texas. I covered the whole state of Texas, right? We did that, right? Literally. And I did it live. I did some of that stuff live. I didn't do everything live because you, you, you do certain stuff in secret so that the Father could give you rewards for it. And I spoke to that storm and I said, you're not going to be here no more. Don't come back here again. And I called it a name. Start with an N. I'm not going to mention. <laughs> I'm not going. And it's not Niagara Falls either. I'm not going to call it again. But I told him. See, I, I spoke to the snow like it was a person. This the faith of the son of God. Galatians 2.20. The life that I now live in the flesh is by the faith of the son of God. See, the faith of the son of God. It doesn't speak to God about things. It speaks to things as God. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to say this again. The faith uh, uh, of the Son of God, it doesn't speak to, to God about things. It speaks to things about God and as God. So when I spoke to the things, I wasn't going to get denied either. I wasn't going to see no snow here. I wasn't going to submit to no natural condition, what they were saying. Huh? I wasn't going to submit to none of that stuff. I was going to decree a thing and it was going to be established. <laughs> and then Ecclesiastes chapter 8 says, where the word of a king is, there's power. You hear me teach on Ecclesiastes 8 a long, a long strong, strong type of way for years now because it's real. And so I spoke to that storm. I called it a name. I gave it a name. I ain't even call it snow all the time. I said, don't come back here again in this season. I don't want to see you. Saints, tell me why the second round of the snow or the second round of the winter storm that they was talking about stopped. In 48 hours, we had sun out. It was hot. The weather was completely hot. Warm outside like nothing happened. But I had made up in my mind, I'm not leaning for no evidence. See, when you walk it by faith, you don't look for evidence. You are the evidence. When you walk it by faith, you don't look for evidence. You are the evidence. The fact that God could take over your mind to let you see his power moving and his power to change a situation that's all the evidence that you need. See, some of y'all been waiting for your body to feel good for you to have faith. You waited for finances to show up for you to have faith. But when you get a revelation of Jehovah Jireh, that he is a place where provision keeps on flowing, you already got evidence. Once you get a revelation that the woman had an issue of blood, her issue left. The man was blind. Now he could see. They had leprosy and now they was cleansed. Once you get a revelation of the healer, you already healed. See, faith don't work it by observation. It worketh by meditation. So once your mind is working with faith, that's the evidence that you need. Everything else about to happen. <laughs> see, you're looking for God to give you a miracle on the outside, but what you can't see is the minute that your mind is no longer in worry, is no longer in fear, is no longer in stagnation, is no longer in double-mindedness, is no longer distracted, that's the minute that faith is giving you evidence. If God could work a miracle in you, blessed be God, you know that he can work a miracle outside of you. The major miracle has to happen with you. Will you be made whole? See, God was dealing with that man first. He was going to take care of his body, but he was saying, I want to deal with you first. Where you at in your mind? Where you at in your imagination? 
Go ahead and share me. <laughs> Go ahead and share me. Glory to God. See, the evidence that you need is not a physical occurrence of what you believe in for. The evidence that you need is the mental flow of divine thoughts inside of you. Divine thoughts inside of you is the evidence that you need to show that God's plan is in full effect. See, that's why hope deferred make the heart sick. Because the minute that you stop expecting the power of God, you stop Christ in you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Philippians 1.11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Huh? Huh? Think about that. Philippians 1.11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. The minute that you let your mind get possessed by the word of God, that's the evidence that you need. You don't need no other evidence. My goodness. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 27. You know how I have made it in this life because I love the word of God. When you love the father's word, he keeps on talking to you. The Holy Spirit have conversation with me all the time. I don't understand how people think stupid. Because I pray prayers. I pray prayers for the Lord to possess me years ago. Every now and again, I still pray it. Lord, possess me. The Lord said, what you, well, how, how much more you want me to possess you? I can't possess you no more. <laughs> I've asked the Lord many a time, Lord, is this something that I'm doing wrong? He says, is this something I'm doing wrong? Like, Lord, what? I, I'm trying to ask you for clarity. I, you, you, you is clarity. What you? See, sometimes you ask God to answer your prayer. Then when he answers your prayer, you're still trying to act like you waited for a prayer to be answered. See, what I'm telling you how faith works, it don't work according to your natural senses, what you can see, feel, and taste. It don't work according to your natural reasoning. It don't work towards your natural documentation. Faith worketh by truth. See, truth is not just a sentence, a paragraph, or, or, or a, um, a conversation with somebody. They telling you the truth. Truth is a person. See, as long as you're looking for truth in the form of, uh, of a sentence from somebody, you're going to miss. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. King Jesus himself. Faith worketh when, when now you're living out of him. Now, saints, I want you to see this here. The Bible keep on saying in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. What does that mean? That means that when Jesus was walking on earth in that body, you was inside of him already. The born again you. You're not hearing me. The woman that you are today, the man that you are today was inside of Jesus when he was tempted in all points and yet he did not sin. When Jesus was going around doing miracles in that body, you was in him. So the power of being in Christ is that when Jesus was living his life on earth, your born again you was inside of him. When you say Jesus come into my heart, all Jesus does is reactivate you into the life that he was living when he was in his flesh. See, Jesus was pregnant with you. My gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. When, when, when King Jesus was on earth in that generation, because Jesus show up in every generation. He don't got to go to the cross again. He not going to the cross again. Once and for all, what the Hebrews say? Once and for all, he paid the price. He sacrificed and he sat down. 
He not, he not, he not, he ain't coming in each generation and say, oh, I come to die for your sin. No, no, he already died for your sins. Now he just come to teach you about his death, about his burial, and about his resurrection. Are you seeing that? So, so he, he don't, he don't come to, 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 to re-die or, or to be re-crucified. Or to have a do-over. He already did it once and for all. Now, Jesus' functionality via the Holy Ghost is to take over a body on earth to preach this gospel to you. To mentor you and train you in what you have now been made qualified to receive. My goodness. Oh my God, I feel fire moving in here, man. I feel the fire of God moving in here. What, 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 what King Jesus, his function is not to come down in a body to die for your sins on a cross. Now, after he done did it once and for all, he done rose from the dead. His function now via his spirit is to now take over a body and introduce you to who you are in him. That's what he do now. So the ministry of King Jesus is not death, it's resurrection power. It's an upgrade. He already paid for that death sentence, right? He already died. He already became sin. He already made you the righteousness of God in Christ. Now he's training you on what righteousness looks like, how righteousness talks, how righteousness walks, how righteousness speaks. How righteousness re reacts, how righteousness lives. So Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, as long as the earth remain, there'll be seed time and harvest. See, while you're inside of the earth and you remain in the earth and the earth still remains here, God wants you to learn seed time and harvest. The things that you petition God for in prayer about be seed activated. People that never learn how to sow and honor God have long prayer lists that never get answered. They beg God for a lot of stuff that they can unlock with a seed. Remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God, all his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Are you hearing me? And saints, I'm going to tell you something like this here. I'm going to tell you something about me. I got angels all around me, so I don't even fear for my life. Yes, I move with security. Yes, I, every, you know, because the Lord, the Lord, Challenge me. I, I never forget when I was about to do a service and I'm a wild man. I done did some stuff in my life to prove my allegiance to God. So I'm not scared of nobody. But I respect all people. I'm not going to harm nobody. I'm not a harmer. I'm a lover. But I ain't stupid. Uh, but the Lord challenged me. He said, I, wanna, I, I want you to use this money for security. And then God started making an understanding towards me, right? He told me, he said, this is a seed test because you got this money in your hands, but this is what the money's were purposed to do. Are you seeing this? And so many times you're going to have to learn that before God make you wealthy, that even when God give you an instruction, don't tell him, I don't need that. No, because it's not about you. It's about you listening to him strictly with the seed test. See, some of y'all might understand. Um, God will tell you to go to the hospital. And you tell us, no, by his stripes I'm healed. Baby, you better go to the hospital. <laughs> be, be, because God, he wrapped up your deliverance in that instruction. See, you looking at natural man, you talking about I ain't going to take no medicine. No, 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 no. He not dealing with that. He dealing with the instruction. So if you dead with Christ, you will do it. See, I'm showing you how so many times people miss God, right? Because what people do, 
is that they follow their own understanding. What did Proverbs chapter three say? Lean not to your own understanding. So God had tested me like that and told me, and then he gave me understanding. Then God told me, he said, son, look at how these security guards, now you're able to bless them. You supplying for their families. Are you seeing this? Because while you're sowing into them, you're actually putting food in their children's mouth. I'm showing you how you walk by faith, but understanding cometh. You walk by faith, but understanding is the reward. And remember what Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15 say, a good understanding give it favor. So when you understand God good instead of evil, because what happens if you understand God in an evil way, then you, you resist what he says. But you, if you understand God in a good way, now you become a friend, agreement. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? And so the understanding gives you favor, the good understanding, because now God allows you to enter into the depths of his heart, all of his benefits, all that his kingdom uh, consists of. And that's all inside of what? A good understanding. So saints, I want you to think about this, right? The Holy Spirit could do more for a sower than a person that just prays. You know why? Because when the person is praying, right? The only thing that they're offering up is time and mouth. Are you seeing this? But when you sow, you offering up livelihood. I'm showing you something, man. I'm showing you something. Just stick with the prophet on here, man. Remember, the woman at Zarephath, this is her livelihood. This is life and death. To the degree she even understood that. She said, this is our last meal and we shall die. But look what he says, give me a portion first. I know that you said that you're going to die, but I'm still telling you I want you to sow. That's how much God has established the law of sowing. That even when people look at their life and they say, well, I got a hand, I got a God, like, I hear you, but so. This only works when God brings a prophet to you. I got to say that. Because this don't work when you just be stupid. You know what I'm saying? Willie Earl, come tell some baby, I want you, I want to buy some cigarettes. Okay, the Lord say I got to sow my last. Okay, Willie Earl, here, go buy you some black of miles. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about you, you doing business with the kingdom. You're a kingdom investor. And when you plant your seed into the word of God being preached, now the word of God becomes a servant to whatever is lacking in your life. My God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Y'all ain't got to receive this word. I'm a sower, so I'm going to take this for myself. You ain't, you ain't got to receive this word. I'm going to take it for myself. You, oh, my goodness. I, 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 got about, I, got about, I got about 40 people on here that's, that's, that you, you taking this in. It's touching you. See, when we deal with how God thinks he's rich, you might look at yourself and say, well, I'm not rich. Then that's proof that you're not really in him the way that you're supposed to be. Because as he is, so are you in this earth. First John chapter four, verse 17. So as he is right now, so are you. King Jesus is rich, he's healthy, he's wealthy, he has abundance, he don't have to worry about nothing. And that's the same mentality that you have to meditate on and translate it to yourself. And guess what? King Jesus was a master sower. Remember Acts chapter 10 verse 38, 
says that he went around doing good. So he's a master sower. He kept on sowing. He was sowing into everybody. He was making sure everybody was experiencing provision. That's the mode in which he was functioning. So I want you to see this. When the mind of Christ takes you over, you're going to be a student of seed sowing. What did the Bible say? Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remained, there'd be seed time and harvest. Now, the powerful thing about this is that not only does the Holy Spirit teach you how to sow, but the Holy Spirit rewards your sowing with more than you sold. So the kingdom system, how it's set up is that God tries you and challenges you with the seed, but that he blesses you and brings you pleasure with the harvest. So it looks like your life is dying, but really you being resurrected in the end. And the life that you now live in the resurrection is the life of glory. Remember what happened in Revelation 5, 12. King Jesus received riches and wisdom and power and glory. And watch this. He receiving all these things in strength. This is what he received. Well, guess what? This is the same thing that you receive when you operate as a sower. See, King Jesus received the harvest. Why? Because King Jesus is a seed. He was planted by the father. And as a result, he came back. And then the father gave him a reward ceremony. When you become a seed sower in the kingdom, there's a reward ceremony. Even the Bible said that in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It talks about that you will reap if you faint not. Now, God doesn't need a year, a month, or a week to bring restoration to you of what you don't currently have. I want you to understand this. The Lord doesn't need a long time to give you long money. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you just catch what I just said? The Lord don't need a long time to give you strong health. See, when you're dealing with the Father in heaven, Remember what King Jesus said, the father already knows what you have need of. So when God birthed this seed system, he wasn't dealing with, okay, I need you to sow in order for me to find a way to take care of you. No, no, no. He already had the way before you were sowing. So your seed not causing God to find a way for you. Your seed is just a platform of you saying, Lord, I'm ready now. See, honor is when you create pleasure to, to, uh, for God with your provision. And harvest is where God creates pleasure for you with his provision. That's hot. Some of you are, you, you got to take notes on that. Honor is where you create pleasure for God with your provision. Harvest is where God creates pleasure for you with his provision. See, the Holy Spirit is on earth right now. He's upon you. He's in you. He's with you and he's, he already knows where all your provision is, all your wealth is. And, and let me shock you. There's no amount of stimulus check. There's no amount of 401k retirement or income from your boss that can match what God wants to give you. So it's a parable when the Lord sends you a certain income because you're supposed to flip that income so that he can come in and do what he really want. 
That's why your paycheck is not a million dollars. But yet you got a million dollars in the spirit. Saints, I've had to use millions of dollars for my ministry. So you're not going to complete your destiny without wealth. Because the things that the father going to have you accomplish for his namesake and his gospel is going to require financial empowerment. And some of you all have, have been so small minded. You don't understand that there's a bigger you in Christ that you have not tapped into yet. See, some of you are telling us, I don't need all that money. All I just need is Jesus. They need to throw a Vienna sausage and slap you in the back of your head because it's not about what you need. There's, there's people in Africa that need you. There's people in Saudi Arabia. There's people in Alabama. There's people in Louisiana. There's people in Phoenix. There's people in California. There's people in Georgia. There's people in Florida. There's people in Toronto. There's people in Israel. There's people in, in, in Egypt. They need you. And for you to get to them, you're going to need wealth. See, we don't think about that. Wealth wins souls. Wealth wins souls. Wealth. Wealth wins souls. And wealth represents the kingdom of God properly. When people look at you, they should see God at work. Hallelujah. When people look at you, they should see that the serpent is destroyed. That you operate in, in a garden glory. When they look at you, they should see that the scorpion is defeated and the powers of the enemy is shut down. Why? Because I got the power of God moving on me, the power to get wealth. The power for health. And some of you all need to stop letting the devil beat up on your head and tell you what type of health you're going to have in this life. I don't let no doctor decide my health. And saints, I'm not going to be sick no time soon. I got perfect health right now. The other day, they tried to do this little quick coronavirus type test on me. They tried to do a little quick thing. Not the actual coronavirus test. You know how they check your temperature. They put that thing on my head. And I say, I say, how's my temperature? The man said, the man said, oh, man, I ain't never seen nobody with no perfect temperature like this. You good. He said, what you taking? I said, isn't that, isn't, 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 isn't that about what I'm taking, man? It's about what I'm making. I'm making decrees. I'm making, I'm making faith work through this body. I'm making the word manifest in flesh. I'm using wisdom. I'm going to keep on using wisdom and your wisdom keep on increasing. Saints, the adventure of life is that God never gives you the fullness of wisdom at one time. Because if he gives you the fullness of wisdom, you're going to stop being a student. And God has pleasure in seeing you learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember that woman, her son died. And she goes to prophet Elisha and says, and, and Prophet Elisha said, God has not revealed to me what has happened to you. So what is Elisha saying? The wisdom has not been given to me about your situation. So talk up, woman. I need you to talk to me. Remember, even God asked Cain, where's your brother? Even God be asking questions. Because even God is fascinated with the idea of conversation and learning. So even when God makes you wise, it's because you are a master student. See, I'm a master teacher because I'm a master student. And stuff that you would disregard and say, I already know that, I will go back and repeat it. And I will listen to it all day. 
See, me and you, we might have different reactions to knowledge. You might say, I already know Psalm 23, but I'm going to look at Psalm 23 for a whole 24 hours and find out what revelation in Psalm 23 that you didn't see. See, the reason why people are considered wise, why there are kings and then there are men. A king has a deeper dimension of functioning in manhood. Because manhood with God in it is really God. <laughs> because where was man made in the image and likeness of God? Manhood with God in it is really God. It's God living his life through a man. The operation of wisdom flows through your receptivity of being a student. If you take a note, write that down. The operation of wisdom flows through your receptivity of being a student. I'm always learning. I could be doing something in a day and I'm meditating scriptures on the low. I multitask, but I make time for the word. So Satan will make you so busy that you're too busy to meditate on the divine covenant that's supposed to be inside of your soul. Every day you got to let the word come inside of your soul again. So you see how you listening to me right now? You got another 24 hours that you're going to have to feed yourself the word again. Or what you heard will be replaced by what you hear. And Satan know how to steal the word. That's the ministry of the serpent. That's the ministry of the scorpion. And that's the ministry of all the powers of the enemy. You shut the devil down when you honor God. Remember what the Bible say in Malachi. He rebuked the devourer for your sake when you start sowing. So imagine the devourer is running wild in your life. It don't matter if you say you love God. The devourer still has authority because the only thing that can stop the devourer is the seed. So the devourer often loves when people say, I, I love God with all my heart, but they don't honor God when they don't learn how to sow. Then the devourer still, devour, still devours them. And you say, well, prophet, how does the devourer devour them? The devourer can speak to somebody that you love. And devour them so that they can't love you. The devourer could get your child to connect with somebody that has a satanic assignment on them so that your child could be devoured. And when you see your child devoured, now it devours you. The devourer should not run wild in your life. See, I created an altar of sowing as a leader, even though I'm a leader. Because I refuse to let the devourer have a throne in my presence. I don't know. Lately, God been moving with a $3,000 seed in my life. That been a hit seed for me. You know, we talk about the thousand seed, but I've been moving with that 3,000 and, and it been working wonders for me. You say, well, prophet, you can't, you know, you, know, you can't buy nothing from God. God is a businessman. And when you honor him, he does deals with you. I do it all the time. You think Lil Uzi created a, a deal with God or Satan? Lil Uzi created a deal with Satan. Most of the secular artists created deals with Satan. They in covenant with the devil and the devil cutting them deals. But they're sowing into the devil. They're going to go to hell. The devil ain't got no heaven to pit nobody in. Satan is a thief. But where did Satan counterfeit that activity from? The Lord. The Lord cuts deals with the sower. That's how it operates. God cuts deals with the sower. I've been moving with that $3,000 seed that have been working wonders for me. 
So guess what? I'm going to see what that be like. If it's working, but why? Why? Because there are things in the spirit that God looks for you to access. When you sow in seed, the father loves seeing you access what number, what money am I supposed to offer to God? He loves that. The Holy Spirit loves the idea of seeing you. Search out what can I offer unto the Lord? Let's go here. Let, let's go here. Where, um, look what David said. We in uh, the book of Psalms here. Look at Psalm chapter 116 verse 18. Look what it says right here. Uh, Psalm 116, verse 17. It says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. Look what it says in verse 18. I will pay my vows. How do you pay? See? Honor. He said, I will pay my vows. That means that David, that's why the Bible called him a man after God's own heart. He was constantly using his heart to find out what he could offer to God that would bring God pleasure. That's David. David was constantly looking for a way to offer something to God. Let's go here to another text. Where David is constantly looking for opportunities to sow. And see, David had a mindset of the seed. He didn't want to ever get away from sowing because he knew that was the kingdom system. Let's go here. I'm trying, I'm taking you here in the book of Psalms. And see, David, he was rich. Let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 20, verse 3. It says, remember all my, all, remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. This was a prayer that David was praying. Let me, let me go there in my Bible because this, these phones, let's go here. This is Psalm, uh, Psalm 20. Look at this here. Let's go ahead to Psalm 20. Psalm 20. See, God is in love with the idea of seeing someone want to take care of him. From the earth realm. That's what touches him. And see, when you operate like that, that's your faith at work. Only faith that works by love can cause you to see how the Lord is in love with a seed sower. Remember, what did the Bible say? God loves a cheerful giver. So it even says that. God loves a cheerful giver, right? So why would the Bible talk about God loving a cheerful giver? He don't love a prayer warrior. He don't love somebody that's fasting. Well, guess what? The Bible don't even say that. It said God loves a cheerful giver. Of course, he loved the person that's fasting, of course. But look, he, he, he distinguished because God always magnifies what he wants you to learn to do. Let's go to Psalm 66. 
Verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us, us out into a wealthy place. Every soul must understand this. That the wealthy place is the promised land while you're honoring God. That means that now you're in a financial position of riches. It says thou has brought me out into a wealthy place, meaning that you have brought me into a place where money is abundant. Provision is abundant. There's no shortage. I have overflow. I have enough for me. I have enough for the gospel. I have enough for others that you have assigned me to. I'm in a wealthy place. Now think about this. The serpent job is to keep you from your wealthy place. That's the job of the scorpion. That's the job of the powers of the enemy to keep the wealthy place alienated from you so that you never occupy it. So how are you going to combat in warfare to get to the wealthy place when Satan has set up all of this trickery plots and weapons and devices to stop you from getting there? The seed. I remember when I was sowing seed, I was sowing seed in, in a poor place financially. Because when I had left everything, my money was small. And so I was sowing, but I would sow my biggest amount out of the small money I had. So I had about $35. Like I would find a way to like sow like $30. And I did it multiple times. It wasn't one time. But money kept on flowing because I was listening to the voice of God on what to do next. The voice of God kept telling me, do this. And guess what? In those days of my life, I borrowed some seeds. If I be honest with you and transparent. I borrowed some seeds. You know what I did? I asked somebody to let me borrow money just so I could sow. I'm, I'm telling you what I did. Because the sowing revelation was so strong in me that I wanted seed to sow. And I was just a teenager. i rather starve myself of food than to starve God of worship. My goodness. That's how I was thinking. But guess what? I got all this money on me right now. Shoot. But see, I'm evidence of what I'm preaching to you. There are some people that talk about giving, but it's not sincere because they're not a giver. They are con men. They tell you to sow to their cash app. They tell you to sow to their PayPal, but they're not true soul. You don't, you don't become soul and bypass seed. You become soul because you mastered the seed principle. You mastered sowing. One time I was talking to a preacher. A preacher was like, a prophet, um, I want people sowing to me. I said, well, let me see your sowing account. I said, you, you want God to bring it shall be given and you're not given? It don't work like that. Now you're trying to enter into the kingdom system like a thief. How are you a small sower and you talking about, Lord, I'm looking for millions of dollars to come to my ministry. You's a thief. That go the same way with business too. You want God to send you customers to buy your product, but you willing to rob God of seed. So why should God move and have people operate in it shall be given, men given into your bosom, when you don't want to give to God. 
See, I don't have to pray for money. I sow. And the abundance of money is in sowing. When I sow, I receive a door to a conversation with the Father. When I sow, I receive a door of conversation with the Father. And I can ask the Father what I will. And the Father will respond to me. Because I've opened up a portal with my honor. Saints, don't sow so quick that you forget your seeds. Don't sow so quick and forget your seeds. Meditate on the seed before you sow it and meditate on the seed after you've sown it. Meditate on the pleasure that it has given to God and meditate on the response that God will give to you because you brought him pleasure. Adam was in Genesis and all he was doing was sowing that seed and God was getting pleasure from Adam and God felt so much pleasure, said, I'm gonna give you a woman. And that, me and you both know that. Well, some of y'all may not know that because you're a woman. I hope you don't know that. But a woman give you pleasure. I need to keep on moving on. I don't want, I don't, I'm trying, I'm But God told Adam, God told Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you pleasure in this earth realm. But see, God used that woman to show Adam how he felt when Adam was helping him and sowing into him and loving on him. See, and every woman must understand that when God anoints you with that wife, grace. That woman in Genesis, she was there to give to Adam what Adam was given to God when she wasn't there. My goodness. He was given to God's submission. When she wasn't there. So God, so Adam was operating as an Eve, a spiritual Eve. To God. So when Eve comes on the scene, all God's saying, okay, now I want you to do to Adam what Adam been doing to me. But he been doing it via the spirit because God ain't gay. <laughs> well, he joyful. He not homosexual. He loved the homosexual, but he not homosexual. And this woman now is doing unto him what he been doing to God. Making God feel good. Showing God respect. Humbling himself before God. Worshiping God. Saints, that woman's job was to worship Adam. God didn't say, woman, I put you on earth to help me. He said, I put you on earth to help him. That's me right there. That's how you help me, help him. <laughs> so there was a divine grace on this woman to be a harvest to Adam. Think about that. That's the power of a virtuous woman. That God anoints you to be him in the earth. To the king that you're assigned to. Adam was a listener of God. Now this woman was 
a listener of him. That's the way it was supposed to be. We know that the serpent messed it up, but that was the way it was supposed to be. Adam was a pleasure maker for God. This woman was a pleasure maker for him. Adam was always ready for the Lord. This woman was always ready for Adam. God was looking for the seed to be sown from Adam into God. And this woman was looking for the seed to be sown from Adam into her. <laughs> Adam wanted God to take him deep. This woman wanted Adam to take her deep. And mentally, she was operating as a harvest system to Adam's life. So when God wanted to supply Adam and bring Adam into the visibility of what he'd been doing to God, God said, let me use her to show you. Saints, Adam unlocked all of this through the seed. When you sow in, what you have to understand is that God is going to speak to people's heart to be to you what you were to him. That means that the reason why that job hired you, that boss, opened up the door for you because God put in that boss's heart to look at you attractively because you have attracted God with your sowing. I have people in my ministry, right? They get jobs that seems like it's above their level of qualification, but they get it. Because they're a seed sower. See, while you sow in seed, you're doing an activity in which angels go to war for you on. Angels war for the seed sower. I won't go here. Uh, uh, um. I won't go here. Angels go to war for you when you honor in God. See, this Judges chapter 13 now. Look, Manoah want a soul. And there's an angel of the Lord right here, Judges chapter 13. Look what the angel said in verse 16. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, do not detain me. That means don't hold me up. Don't hold me back. I will not eat your bread. Because he was trying to feed the angel because he thought it was a man. Or he, he just wanted to sow rather. Let me just say it like that. He want, they, they wanted to sow. Wait, Manoah. Wait a minute. Wait, that was the woman. Okay, so Manoah was the man. And Manoah wanted to sow. Look what it said in verse 16. That's Samson's dad. If that, look what the angel say. If Thou will offer a burnt offering. Look, the angel know about burnt offerings and sowing into the Lord. Look, the angel said, if you will sow and offer a burnt offering to the Lord, thou must offer it unto the Lord. That's another revelation of the seed that I could preach three hours on. When you sowing, you have to see yourself 
and you have to visualize yourself actually giving to King Jesus. See, that, that's how I used to sow. I didn't see like I was sowing into the prophet. I was seeing I'm sowing into King Jesus. That's, that's what unlocked me. That King Jesus is, is being taken care of, the gospel going forth off of my seed. I'm helping the Lord complete his plans in a week, in a month, in a year. Look what happened. Thou must offer it unto the Lord. So what the angel is even talking about, the mentality of sowing. Wow. I got to get off of him, man. This angel is dealing with something fresh here. The angel say, if you're going to sow, make sure that you, you sow it unto the Lord. Meaning mentally, you need to imagine this, visualize this, that I'm giving this as an offering unto the Lord. That the Lord is taking this and he's examining this as evidence of how I think about him. When he looks at this seed, he's going to study it to receive the communication in which I've communicated. Either Lord, I don't know if you got me, so I'm going to make sure that you got enough just to let you know that I, I, I do think that your system is right, but I don't trust you that you got me. See, this angel understood the fresh anointing of seed sowing, that you have to be in a mental mindset for the seed to go forth. You have to see it as I'm helping God out. It can't work if you have not adapted to what's really going on. If you sowing a seed just because you see your, a man say so, that's not real sowing. You have to visualize and meditate and ponder on how this is edifying God when he studies it. Because remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Money seed that's sown. Is, in, is a love letter of your faith. So that seed. Is faith disguised. Wisdom disguised, trust and perfect love disguised. Your seed is trust disguised. You have wrapped up your faith in a seed. And you, you're sending it to God. You're not just sowing and it's just in the earth realm. No, your seed ascends to God and God examines it and he enjoys it. Saints, it'd be so shocking when you find out that people have lived their whole life and have never learned how to sow. Like, how much of pleasure have you robbed from God? This is what God put you down here on earth to do. The first man wasn't created to shoot no basketball or hit no hole in one. Wait, I might have to take that back. Don't think about it. I think about Tiger Woods, but never mind. The, the, the whole and everything didn't sound too great. It's late night. Don't worry about it. Let's just keep on. I think it kind of messed me up. All right. I, I got. See, everything on this earth belongs to you anyway. When you start sowing and honoring God, all the Father does is just deal with all the activity in the spirit realm where Satan is hindering you from possessing what's already yours. When you're sowing seed, you are releasing the power of God to go forth wherever the devil has been blocking you off for you to take authority and for you to possess what is yours. 
Satan doesn't want anybody to learn how to sow because once you learn how to sow, you shut down the serpent. The serpent respects the seed. The seed is a murder weapon upon the serpent. Remember what God said in Genesis that your seed shall crush the head of the serpent. God dealt with the seed principle to shut down the serpent that messed up the plan of God. When you sow in seed, you are putting an end to Satan's interference to mess up the plan of God for your life. So these are things that you have to visualize when you sow in. You are officially blocking off the devil from having place and space and grace to intertwine with what God has said is going to happen to you. Now, when you seed sowing, you have to learn how to name the seed as well. You have to command your seed and you have to function in the wisdom of talking because that money seed leave in your hand, but the word seed need to leave your mouth. Your mouth and your hand are seed sowers. That money seed is leaving your hand, but the word seed needs to leave your mouth. Your mouth and your hand are seed sowers. Both of them need to stay in the sowing flow. Your mouth and your hand need to keep on sowing. And see, sometimes what your mouth is called to sow is praise and thanksgiving unto God. Sometimes it's not a decree. Sometimes it's tongue. Sometimes it's praise, blessing the name of the Lord, rejoicing before God. But your mouth and your hands must stay in the creativity of sowing. Wow. 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 Your, your mouth and your hands must keep on humbling itself to its sowing assignment. Your mouth and your hands must keep on bountifully sowing. So your mouth and your hands must find the depths of the seed to sow into a situation. So your, your hands must find the seed that God wants, the bountiful seed that God wants, that's the area of money. You use your money as a gift. You use your money as an honor weapon. You find that bountiful seed in the area of money that God wants from you and you sow it. You find that bountiful seed in the area of the word of God that God wants you to sow. Think about that. See, by his stripes you were healed is a bountiful seed for health. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation, Psalm 91, is a bountiful seed for health. 